When you look at a glass of water or a window pane, um, you shift your head around, you see the image moving a little bit. You see little shimmery things or with the glass if you put something in it. You see um, things are not quite where they expect to be. This phenomenon is called refraction. And the light rays just shift around and bend. And we're going to attempt to cover um, these four things uh, in this video, um, which is quite a bit to cover. So first of all, refractive index. Um, refractive index is uh, the, if you like, the density. We, we talk about the optical density um, of a substance. Um, and when you're comparing the density of it, um, for, in, for example, glass, um, glass um, has a refractive index of approximately 1.5. Um, and it's comparing glass to a vacuum and the property of empty space. Um, a vacuum has um, a refractive index of 1.0. So what we would say then is that glass um, is 1.5 times harder for light to travel through. That also means that the light slows down by the same factor. Um, so if we're going to, let's just shrink this down a wee bit and shift it out of the way. Um, if we're going to consider a uh, a block, this is a nice colour for glass, and um, this is the edge of glass, um, and we've got a light ray, um, let's make the light ray, oops, where happened my, there it goes, an orange light ray in this case is shining at the surface of this glass, um, and we have, uh, we have to have this thing called the normal, which is a reference line, which is perpendicular to the surface and we use that to help us um, work out what's going to happen to that light ray, which way it's going to bend. Now, uh, if light is going from, say, air into glass, air has approximately the same refractive index as a vacuum, 1.0, and uh, glass, as we saw, is 1.5. So when you're traveling from the light ray going into a substance of greater refractive index, it'll bend, the light will bend towards this line called the normal. Okay, so the light continues. You notice it's got a slight bend downwards towards the normal. Um, and this is the phenomenon we know of refraction. We consider a single light ray at a time because it's easier. and We break down the whole idea uh, quite nicely. So... We've got this concept of refraction. Um, we're using a refractive index and the normal to help us understand um, and kind of build a model of what happens in, in the situation of light rays striking different surfaces. Um, but there's one other tool that we would like to use which will help us, um, and that's Snell's Law. So bring all that down once more. And uh, Snell's Law is a useful little equation. It goes something like this n1 sine theta1 equals, uh, let's just move it across a wee bit, n2 sine theta2. And what this refers to is, uh, I think you probably under catch the refractive index in there. Um, actually you won't because we haven't told you that the symbol for refractive index is n. Uh, so we've got to do that. Um, refractive index of one thing, so that's refractive index of one, and this is the angle that it strikes um, the surface at, but the angle is measured from the normal, not from the actual surface itself. So um, if you're considering the angle, you're not dealing with this one, you're dealing with this one. Okay, very important, it's the angle between the normal and the light ray. And um, let's just write down what that is. Um, that is the angle of incidence. To use the terminology, incident means it's um, going in or it's striking from uh, a pathway traveling inwards. And then that deals with both things on this side. This is sine theta is a single term, n1 is a single term. So when you're rearranging the equation, you can consider these as, as individual units. Um, to, to shift around, uh, like sine theta 1 would be just equal to an x value or something. Nice and easy to deal with there. 
Um, and then the other side, you've probably worked it out by now, um, that N2, uh, let's change our colour so that we're not confusing ourselves um, here. Um, N2 is the um, refractive index of the second medium. So that's the substance that would be glass in this case down there. And then uh, theta 2 is the angle of refraction. Okay, it's refracted, and now this is the angle of refraction, and that's the angle between the normal. Let's color it in so it's very clear. The angle between the normal on the side where the ray is traveling um, out and uh, the light ray itself, so that angle right there. Once again, you don't use the angle um, between the uh, surface, so again, not that angle, this is the correct angle where the tip goes between the light ray and the normal. And how you use this, you pretty much just plug numbers into the equation. Um, for instance, if we knew the refractive index of air was 1.0, we would just put in one point, in fact, let's get a different color again, we would make uh, air um, 1.0 times by sine, which is just the sine function on your calculator, times that first angle there, whatever that happened to be, if it was say uh, 25 degrees, so we'll put in 25 degrees, um, and uh, N2 in this case um, is the refractive index of glass, which is 1.5 from earlier times by sine of this angle here. And if we're trying to find that angle, we've just got to rearrange that equation and do the reverse functions um, to work that out. And that'll be the subject of another video giving you an example of how to use Snell's Law. So, very quickly recapping, we've looked at um, the refractive index, which is um, a measure of uh, the um, optical density. The harder it is for light to travel in that medium, and the slower that light goes, the higher the refractive index. I'll give you a reference, diamond is one of the hardest things that light can actually travel through, and that has a refractive index of about 2.5. Um, we've got this concept of the normal to help us line up our light rays with the surface. And the normal is perpendicular to the surface of the, uh, where the light ray is striking. We've looked at refraction, which is this concept of light bending. Um, we saw that light bends towards the normal when it's going from a low to a high, so it goes towards the normal, and um, we didn't talk about this, but there is an example uh, in, in dealing with lenses, where if you're going from a high refractive index to a low, so this would be the light ray coming out the other side of the glass block, it's going to bend away from the normal. And then we looked at Snell's Law, which is a very handy equation um, over here to help calculate some stuff. Thanks very much.